Welcome. Two things have brought us together today. To praise God, to sing and offer our prayers unto God, and to remember Denny. Would you join me in prayer? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our salvation. Amen. The resonance of salvation and the hope of eternal life sing out in the texts of Isaiah and Revelation and come to us with a new voice from Mary. And this is good news. The prophet Isaiah tells us that the God of our ancestors and the God of all humankind will meet us, will feed us, will be just and compassionate to us, and will in the end swallow death forever when heaven and earth embrace. This promise is not for a few people somewhere, but for all people everywhere. Isaiah's promise is given to the entire human race. On a holy mountain, on the day of God's choosing, God will be there, and God will wipe away the tears from all faces and will wipe away the disgrace of all God's people. And God will save us, it says, when God will determine this time and place and the particulars of God's saving plan, God will save us. Most of the book of Revelation is an experience of wilderness and wild events and unfamiliar imagery and bewildering characters. The first 20 chapters offer travelers little rest and comfort. While graphic and musical artists love the vibrant imagery and the wild things of John's revelation, because of the colorful cosmic creativity, most experience these visions as strange and bizarre. Then, like a bow arriving after a rainstorm, the 21st chapter greets us. And the 21st cha chapter shines light and hope breaks forth in the simplicity and clarity of the words, Behold, the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down from heaven like a bride adorned for her husband. And the voice from the heavens declare that God's place is among mortals. God will come down and be with us. God will wipe away our tears, as Isaiah had promised. And God's arrival will mean that mourning has passed away, crying, and pain have ended, and God will make all things new. We are reassured further as these words are delivered from the throne of God, I make all things new, thus says the Lord. The one who is the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, offers water from the spring of life and the promise of eternal homecoming. Isaiah and Revelation meet Mary in her song of praise. And the prophets of Jewish scripture and the prophets of Christian scriptures offer a vision of the end of death and the beginning of eternal life. They show us life beyond the pain and grief, pointing beyond the tears and the anguish, and pointing beyond this place and this time. Can you hear these words? Do they resonate in your soul? And through the music of the spheres and the language of angels, do you get this? Does it land in you? Does it take home in you? These are the words of God for the people of God for today. Let them live in you in such a way that they change you, that they become one in you as they seek to become one with you. The point they point us to no less than eternal salvation. So do not miss their arrival and their call into our hearts and minds. Throughout his lifetime, George Denny Bernard gave us many gifts. He did this in many ways. He shared his musical gifts, his talents as a teacher, his choral directing, and his talent on the organ. He gave us the gift of love, the gift of friendship, 
He gifted us with body humor, an impish smile, and a hearty laugh. He shared his passion for excellence and his zeal for perfection with all of us, all the time. But more than anything else, Denny received and shared a vision of salvation in his own musically prophetic and powerful way. He received music that transformed and he gave it back to us in transformational ways. He received the vision of eternity transposed to paper from the hearts and minds of musical geniuses of the ages and called forth our better angels to receive these notes of salvation, to hear them, to sing them, to share them, to own them. Like an electric wire that connects one source of power with another, Denny was a conduit for God of all that is beautiful, all that connects heaven and earth. His music made us sigh in awe and cry with an overwhelming sense of delight and splendor. Denny Bernard was a profound human being. For those of you who were blessed to know him before his 51 years in Columbus, you knew this better than the rest of us. And for those of us who came to know him in various stages over the last 50 years, you saw this too. He often masked his profundity with humor, but make no mistake about it, he was an absolute genius, and he was genuinely one of God's greatest gifts to each of us, musically and more. Denny's stories, his jokes, his pronouncements, his music, his presence will be with us forever, and each of us has a piece of that story that we'll always carry with us. But always remember this, his brilliant life was designed in such a way that he, like Johann Sebastian Bach, gave everything that he had to us and then returned it to God. Let us do the same. Like Bach and Bernard, two names that have always been together since I have been here, always united, may we give all the glory to God. Amen.